Hello guys, welcome back to Gracie TV and I'm so excited to do today's story because one of the most notorious infamous criminals ever in South Korea. He's the only man who was able to escape the high security Busan prison. Many people actually are inside of him and root for him till this day. They call him the Robin Hood, the real prison breaker, the drama, the real anti-hero joker of Korea. So do you guys like my outfit today? Like this is a freaking blue fire that I have on here, a blue fire dress. And of course, my constellation star and cross earrings that I have today. I just want to give a big shout out and thank you to Skinny Mint for sponsoring today's video. You guys know, you guys know, I always talk about Skinny Mint. They have a new detox cherry bomb, one of their 20 day teas, and this one is laxative free. So if you guys want any laxative free tea formulas, this is perfect for you. It helps reduce bloating, it's rich in antioxidants, boosts immunity, there's vitamin C, superfruits in here and the drink is pink. Well, you guys know one of my favorite products from Skinny Mint is the Green Cleansing Elixir and the Slim Tremend Shake. I drink this every single morning, you guys. I mix them together to give me a morning protein shake before workout. The Elixir also has superfruits and probiotics, so it makes me feel really good and I'm energized before going workout. It's a really tasty way to get your proteins. It tastes like cupcakes and if you do not like taking proteins, Slim Tremend Shake is the way to go. They're going to be having a Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale, so go and check it out you guys. Thank you so much Skinny Mint for sponsoring today's video. Let's talk about Shin Chang Wan. Like I said, people root for him. Actually, back then, girls were like really fantasizing about this guy. They called him handsome. A lot of young people found him cool and the shirt that Shin Chang Wan wore went viral in Korea and started trending. That's how much this guy was a sensation. Shin grew up with his five siblings. He actually grew up in a very poor neighborhood and his mother passed away from cancer at a young age. His father was known to be very strict disciplined him and he would hit the kids. I mean, that was kind of like the way that a lot of Asian parents dealt with kids, especially back then. Later, he even had a stepmother who said she didn't really care about the family and when the kids were sick, she really didn't care. The school system wasn't supportive either to Shin and back then, teachers would humiliate kids if they didn't bring money to school and would even kick them out and even hit them, curse at them. It was just a really broken school system and they used to have kids bringing money to school kind of as like a yearly fee where it was like a fee that every student had to pay to the school and they made the kids bring the money. Shin's teacher once told him, hey stupid, you didn't bring any money to school today? F off. And he would then kick him out. According to Shin, when he heard this from his teacher, this was when the devil inside of him was born. He started to run away from home ever since elementary school. He, he also hated his family and he started to steal. He might have also started to steal because of his poverty. Maybe he didn't have enough things to eat at home. He stole chickens and watermelons and he was actually known to be a very fast runner so nobody was actually able to catch him when he would do these things. One day when he was 14 years old, he was caught by the police for stealing and his father was so angry that he actually told the police, hey, lock him up in juvenile. And this was when Shin says he felt like even his family betrayed him. For us adults, looking back, his father probably did this with good intentions, wanting to discipline his child, but to Shin, this was like betrayal from his own father. And ever since since then, he says his kleptomania just kept getting worse and worse. Now, this is the biggest turn and this is when the story gets really interesting. It was when he was 22 years old, he decided to steal from a supermarket with four other friends and the store owner actually ended up dying from the robbery. It was just the robbery gun bad and the owner just ended up dying. That's when Shin and the other guys ended up in life imprisonment in 1994. He was sent to the Busan prison where it was known to be one of the toughest and most secure prison in in Korea. Shin just hated the prison life like anyone else. He just could not fathom that he was going to be here for life and until he died. He said, I need to get out of here. I don't care what it takes. Now Shin was put into a wood workshop. Apparently there's like different programs in prison that you could do. And he stole a small saw in this wood workshop and he put it into the sole of his shoes. Now apparently in prison in Korea, there is something called the educational broadcasting system where just like a radio, they turn on some kind of education 
educational study thing and everyone is able to hear it. This was the only time they say actually when the guards weren't really watching the prisoners because the educational broadcasting would be so loud. So this is when every single day for 20 minutes for four months, Shin would saw the air filtration in the bathroom. So he would literally have to saw the steel bars for 20 minutes every single day because obviously this was the only time when people wouldn't hear him actually sawing. Now this filter was only about 32 by 28 centimeters which is very very tiny. I think I think it would be even hard for me to fit in there. Now at this time Shin was said to be about 172 centimeters tall and 80 kilograms or 5 foot 6 and 180 pounds. There's no way he was gonna fit in here. So what did he decide to do? He rolled this blade and said I need to go on a diet. So Shin actually dieted and starved himself for two months. He said he only took a little bit of protein to keep himself alive and he actually lost about 15 kilograms or 33 pounds in two months. So it was time he lost the weight and he escaped through the filter. Now the next thing you have to go through is obviously the walls of the prison. The walls of the prison was 4.5 meters or 14 foot-ish. It's impossible to climb and especially up there there's guards. So Shin thought really hard and he started rolling his brains again. So apparently at the time there was a church that was under construction right where the wall was so Shin decided to dig the ground with that steel bar that he bought from the air filter and he actually was able to sneak into the construction because he dug the hole which is actually pretty smart. Once he got into the construction there was a lot of equipment that he could use to actually go over the walls and that's what he did and that's how he escaped this high security prison. This is called literally the great prison escape because of how well it was planned out and done. So this whole prison escape took him about two hours and soon after the guards realized that Shin escaped. For the next week, several days, there was a big manhunt in order to catch this guy, Shin. During this week, in order to survive, Shin stole cars, money, and different things. Police did not catch him, but they were able to catch his car that he stole. There was wigs, there was stolen money, clothes, and things like that in order to change his appearance. The public actually criticized the Korean police because they saw it as embarrassing that they could not catch this one guy. He was so wanted by the police that there was even a $50,000 reward, which is still to this day about second biggest reward ever given to the public for wanted criminals. The really confusing part and the interesting part about Shin is that while he was on the run, he would go into like disabled homes, to elderlies, and he would actually donate money to them. It said that while he was on the run, he went to the facility for the disabled and donated $1,000, gave them a box of apples and meats, and the elders who worked there had a very good impression of Shin. So the money that he stole, he was able to also give back a little bit to the community. And I personally believe that's how he was able to get luck on his side for such a long time. On the 10th day of escaping, Shin went to a small coffee shop and he just he was just enjoying his coffee. That's when the coffee shop worker sat next to him and they just started talking. They were casually talking and Shin noticed that the coffee worker, Jay, was not feeling well. So he asked her, you look a little bit sick. And she said, yeah, I do have a little bit of a cold. And that's when Shin got up, came back with a cold medicine and an energy drink. This is when the lady Jay, she was starstruck. She just fell in love with this guy and she was like, who is this? He's a little handsome, he's young. I mean, he is caring about me. Like, who is this customer? And that's when they started to meet outside for a couple more times and started to date. They went on food dates together, karaoke, eventually fell in love. So this is when Shin actually started to open up to Jay and started saying, hey, I'm actually not like a good guy. I've been to prison and I'm actually the infamous Shin Tang One. By this time, everybody knew who he was, but maybe like you can't really tell the face, you know? He told her about his great escapes, how he had to stay in basements and boxes in order to get away from the police. And I think she fell in love with like his criminal activities and how he determined he was to not go back to prison. So she actually told Shin, oh my god, Oppa, just come and live with me. I have an apartment and we could just start a life together. So that's what they did. Shin moved in with Jay in her apartment. They even had barbecue with the neighbors and the neighbors thought that they were just a cute newlywed couple. Neighbors also said that Shin would bring meat for everybody to share in the neighborhood. Here's a man in needy and he said that Shin would come and help him out financially. 
Now, unfortunately, because Jay met Shin, she actually started to do criminal activities herself. So Jay would pawn the items that Shin brought and she would bring the money and they would use this as a living expense together. So technically now Jay is also a criminal as well. So it's not the best influence that she got from Shin, but there's something about criminals that some women love. Like there's a lot of stories about how women fall in love with criminals. If you guys know the psychology behind women liking criminals, let us know in the comments down below. I would love to know your insights. So people say Shin would also spend a lot of money, but he was also giving as well. So this is the confusing part. He actually tipped a lot of people whenever he went out, which if you guys know, tipping culture is not a thing in Korea. It's a thing in the Western countries, but in Korea, you don't tip. So he said he would go to like car washes and he would pay the workers like $10 each as a tip. So people thought, whoa, like he is either rich or he is in the gang because this is not normal. But one thing was that he would also wear long sleeves like this in the hot summer. And this was actually to cover up his tattoos. Tattoo wasn't even illegal till very recently actually. So people who had tattoos back in 90s, there was a stereotype that they were usually in a gang or they were criminals. So it's been about nine months into the escape now. He hasn't been caught. But this one car wash worker saw this as suspicious. He reported this to one of his friend officer and they soon found out that this was the infamous Shin that police were looking for for nine months now. And that officer decided to go alone by himself. He wanted to do this mission alone because he said that he wanted to be promoted at work. So he wanted to be credited and promoted at work. So he said, let me catch this guy alone. So they found Shin's girlfriend Jay's apartment and he went there and he waited and waited until 5.30 a.m. Finally, Shin started walking up the apartment stairs. Shin actually noticed that there was someone standing at the door and he knew that this could be a police officer. Police officer all of a sudden noticed that Shin noticed that he was there so he took out a gas gun and fired two shots into Shin's face. I'm not really sure exactly what a gas gun is but they said that if, if you get hit by a gas gun people go unconscious or they're very irritated and uncomfortable kind of like a pepper spray for a couple hours. Shin was shot right down on his eyes and one on his forehead and Shin actually just wiped away the blood and he started running like a maniac. The gas gun did not even phase him at all and I think this is because he was in the survival mode all the time. He was always running away. I think because of adrenaline, this gas gun did not even phase him. It's like he was Iron Man. Unfortunately for the police, Shin got away, but they were able to find the girlfriend, Jay. Jay was questioned by the police, but she lied and acted that she didn't know that it was Shin. And of course, Jay knew that it was Shin, but she lied to the police because she really liked this guy. While Shin was on the run, it seemed like they liked each other enough to keep secretly contacting each other, even if Jay was under the police watch. Now one day when Shin felt like the police watch was kind of on the down low, he visited Jay and said, Hey, do you want to come with me? Run away with me like a Korean drama, run away with me, the criminal. So Shin asked Jay to run away with him, but for some reason, Jay said she refused at first. So Jay claims that she refused Shin's proposal offer because she was trying to be like the cool girl, you know, like, you know how girls are, sometimes girls are opposite in their feelings. They say no, but they actually mean yes in their brain. So I think Jay, that's what Jay was doing. She actually really still liked Shin, but apparently Shin took this as just a breakup and he said, oh, okay and he just left. 10 days after the breakup, Shin called Jay asking her for his belongings. So they decided to meet up in a secret location. Jay still had a lot of feelings for Shin. So she was actually excited to meet him. This was when she was so angry because he was with another woman. Apparently the new girl that Shin was with was a 21 year old young hot female. So in just 10 days, he got a new girl and they already started living together. Allegedly, Shin had a lot of women that he switched during this runaway. I guess a lot of women just loved him. He was a womanizer. In an interview with Jay, Shin's first girlfriend, the interviewer asked, would you go back to Shin? And she said, yes, I love him. I would go back to him. So now another couple days passed by and I don't know why the reason is but Shin called Jay again and they wanted to meet up. So I believe this is when the police probably told Jay, hey, try to meet up with Shin. And that's what they did and they decided to meet up at a parking lot. Now the moment that Shin got out of the car and was approaching Jay's car, Jay actually had police inside the car with her. That's when the police bolted out of the car and they started wrestling and fighting with Shin. Apparently they got into like a movie fight where they were 
just like beating each other up. The policeman, the two policemen that was there just could not handle Shin. I told you Shin was a really great fighter and they were fighting for 30 minutes. Now the moment that Shin was about to get away, one of the police officer took out his gun, shot at him, but I told you luck is on Shin's side. Apparently at that moment, the gun was malfunctioning and boom, he was able to get away. When police found his car, they found a lot of valuable items such as jewelry that he stole, a lot of watches, cash, fake car license, clothing, and they also found Shin's diary. This is really interesting because Shin actually really likes writing. He actually wrote in details in his diary about his day-to-day -day life, about how he escaped prison, and how he went about his robberies and even his childhood. In one of the writings, he says, I'm so jealous of those who live a normal life, those who live for the loved family. And he just wrote about how his childhood really shaped the way he grew up and the way he thinks about society. The people who analyzed his diary said that his vocabularies and the way he writes is not just of someone who didn't go to school. He actually used a lot of complicated words and sentences. Fast forward to 907th day of escaping or two years and six months. It was 1999, July 16th. The police got a call from a man who claimed he saw a man that looked like Shin while working at an apartment gas. He was someone that went into people's houses and fixed like the gassing in the house. But this gas guy was actually, his dream was to become a policeman. Back when he was in the army, they said that he was in the intelligence department. So his gut feeling seemed more developed than other people. He claims that he went to do a routine checkup in an apartment and there was a man and a female living there. The man had a hat on and he would avoid eye contact with the gas guy. He also had many workout materials in the house and he thought that was a little weird. Another thing he found was weird was that there was no couple pictures. And they said especially until the 90s, a man and a woman would never really live together unless they were actually married. So the gas guy thought, that's weird. Why would a couple be living here without any pictures? He thought that the guy also looked like Shin, but he wanted to be sure. So he went to a nearby real he asked them, hey, who lives in this apartment? And he found out that the apartment was under a female name. Again, in the 90s, it was very conservative, so it was always the men who had their name in the apartment contracts. He was pretty sure that this could be the infamous Shin Chang Won, so he called the police. Now this time, to make sure they get Shin, they got 46 armed policemen together around the apartment. Police then went up to the apartment, Shin opened the door, and unfortunately, this was it for Shin. There was no way of escaping 46 armed men. Finally, Shin was caught on July 16th, 1999, and the gas guy received the $50,000 reward, and he was actually hired to become a policeman. Like I said, it was actually his dream. This was what Shin wore that day when he was captured, and people were so stunned because not a lot of people wore crazy colorful outfits like Shin, and they said that the shirt was trending left and right after this, like it was in the malls, it was copied. On top of the life imprisonment Shin already had, he received 22 extra prison years for the two years that he ran away and all the things that he stole. So why did people started rooting for this guy? A lot of young people liked him because you know young kids like to be rebellious and they saw Shin as like the gods of the young kids. During this time they said there was also corruption with the government and with the wealthy people. So mixed with the wealthy people and government scandal, they saw Shin as just like the anti-hero here. Although police say he just stole whatever opportunities that he got and he did not purposely steal from the rich and gave it to the poor. Ever since his capture now, it's been over 20 years and Shin is now 52 years old and he actually finished high school degree in prison. He even earned a psychiatric license where he said he wanted to help others who are just like him. During this time when he was recaptured, he sent a lot of letters to the government and the police where he talks about the unfairness of the prison system and people are surprised by his letters as his writing skills are very very intricate and it's complex and it, and it definitely seems like someone who's been studying writing for a long time. In the letter he says, I've been in prison for 22 years of my life. Out of the 13 years, I've been sent to the isolated detention where I've never caused any fights or trouble. Why must I wear handcuffs? Why can't you let me watch TV? Why isolate me? Dealt with many psychological problems including anxiety, hallucination, nightmares, depression, and more. I am not a dangerous person and and I will do all I can to fight this. Shin tried to commit suicide back in 2011. Unfortunately, he ended up surviving. Someone found him before he actually passed away and he's still alive till this day. In one of his writings, he says, please give love to children who have family and society problems so you don't have a criminal
criminal like me ever again. Recently, last month, a famous TV program doing an episode about Shin sent a letter to Shin in prison and they got a response from Shin Chang Won. I've been thinking a lot for two days, but what can a sinner who committed a felony that even lacked the death penalty? All are just excuses. I just want to live quietly until the end of my time. From Shin. So that was the story of Shin Chang Won, the infamous prison breaker. I'm gonna be very honest, I'm very conflicted too because how can someone like Shin receive life imprisonment but someone like Cho Do Sun, you guys know this guy, right? Is gonna be released from prison December 2020 this year. Like literally in a couple weeks. A lot of people are saying, yo, put this guy back in jail and let him leave. Do you really think he was trying to do good by donating while he was on the runaway? Do you think he really felt bad for the poor? Let me know what you guys thought. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe. Hit the notification bell because I reply to all my early birds. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys in my next video.